If you would have to take only one pill just once and you would live forever, would you do it? Well, this is something that uh, was brought up by one recent uh, article where uh, just using rapamycin, which is a potent anti-aging drug, that using that for just one time is as effective as lifelong treatment. So in this video, we'll take a look at this study and talk a little bit about what is rapamycin, is it worth taking it, and yeah, would you do it? You take the red pill. So here's the article on neurosciencenews.com, August 29, 2022. Brief exposure to rapamycin has the same anti-aging effects as lifelong treatment. So it's based on this uh, also study that was published on 29th of August, and uh, it says long-lasting cure protection from brief rapamycin treatment in early adulthood by persistently increased intestinal autophagy. So it's not a human study. <laughs> they took uh, Drosophila, which are flies, fruit flies, and the mice, and uh, only a, like three-month treatment in um, early adulthood was enough uh, like to have like these beneficial effects on uh, longevity. In the fruit flies, a brief early rapamycin treatment of adults extended lifespan and attenuated age-related decline in the intestine to the same degree as lifelong dosing. And in uh, mice, the early treatment also induced a memory effect. So as you can see from this graph, starting the rapamycin treatment at day 30 instead of day 45, uh, that resulted in a little bit longer survival in uh, these uh, animals uh, compared to starting it later. Here we can also see that uh, compared to chronic use of rapamycin, then uh, doing the rapamycin treatment only between days 1 to 15 was giving pretty much the same identical results in terms of uh, the uh, survival and uh, the lifespan of these animals. And the reason why the rapamycin treatment did uh, extend the lifespan of these animals was because of this uh, gut uh, autophagy increase that uh, was uh, done with the drug. And uh, when they overexpressed ATG1, which is one of the autophagy genes, then uh, compared to the rapamycin treatment, then that pretty much gives the same uh, lifespan extension as the just the overexpression of the ATG1 genes. So yeah, like the reason why these animals live longer was because of this overexpression of ATG1 um, or autolog increased autophagy in the gut. As a caveat, you know, this is a study done on mice and fruit flies. So I don't think that it probably is going to carry over to humans, um, or at least we don't know yet. And uh, even then, like a three-month uh, treatment of rapamycin in, in uh, fruit flies or my mice may be completely different in humans. We don't know how much would you need to use rapamycin for. I don't think it is three months because, you know, the uh, average lifespan of um, a mouse isn't that long. And uh, a fruit fly especially, they don't live uh, for decades, etc. And um, yeah, maybe for humans using rapamycin, that short-term treatment of rapamycin, rapamycin would entail that you have to take it for maybe, you know, 10 years or even 20 years to see the extension in your lifespan instead of uh, throughout your lifetime. So I don't know if it's still, maybe it's not still worth it uh, to do it, even if you do take it for, you know, imagine five years of your life you're taking rapamycin. Disappointed! So what is rapamycin? Essentially, rapamycin is an uh, immunosuppressant drug and uh, the main mechanism by which it works and by which it does extend the lifespan in other animals, what we know, is through the suppression of mTOR. And mTOR is this growth pathway in the body that, you know, does many good things. It uh, grows muscle, it helps to rejuvenate um, your tissue, etc., but in excess is also associated with aging and uh, cancer. This has also been validated by other studies, so uh, transient rapamycin treatment can increase lifespan and health span in middle-aged mice. So uh, using rapamycin for three months is um, sufficient to increase life expectancy by up to 60% and improve measures of health span in middle-aged mice. So yeah, rapamycin is the most powerful and the most you know, potent anti-aging molecules or drugs that we know right now. It's the most powerful one. It uh, yields the most lifespan extension in these other model organisms and uh, animals. So, but we don't have, pretty much we don't have any human studies actually to assess that. And um, currently there are a few in the works of uh, looking at how rapamycin does affect humans, maybe in the like, longer term. Um, but yeah, it's something that uh, is still very unclear. We don't know any answers in the long term when it comes to humans. Even later in your life, uh, taking rapamycin can also extend lifespan uh, in uh, mice. So uh, yeah, it apparently doesn't really matter when you take it uh, to see like an extension in lifespan. Probably 
based on uh, this study, the new 2022 study, then taking it in your early adulthood probably may be better slightly. But uh, regardless, even taking it in your, um, let's say, la late in life, that still has positive effects on the lifespan of uh, mice and other animals. Wait a minute. Now, the problem is that rapamycin also has uh, negative side effects. As I said, it's an immunosuppressant drug. It can have negative effect on your immune system. Um, and uh, it can also have like a negative effect on your insulin resistance and uh, metabolic health. Obviously, it can also have a negative effect on uh, muscle mass and uh, bone density indirectly. So uh, yeah, you don't want to be blocking or suppressing uh, mTOR all the time. You want to have it at certain times to build muscle and uh, to maintain insulin sensitivity and good metabolic health. So what I think of it, uh, I'm not planning on taking rapamycin. <laughs> like uh, maybe, you know, I would for sure need more evidence to see what the long-term effects are. Yeah, like I would think, th think that, you know, taking it very briefly, like maybe like, let's say you take rapamycin for a week or a few months is probably fine. You're not gonna have any long-term negative side effects on your uh, lo longevity and health span, you probably will have actually like a positive effect, but it's, there's just not enough uh, evidence to suggest that it would have like any meaningful impact on your overall longevity. There are people online who have heard that are also taking like rapamycin, maybe, you know, they have like these schedules where they take rapamycin maybe like once a month for a few days or something. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe it is going to have a positive effect on longevity, maybe it isn't. I think there's many other variables that need to be taken into account. Yes, suppressing mTOR periodically is probably good. Like, you don't want to have the mTOR elevated chronically because that's just a recipe for accelerated aging and cancers. But at the same time, we don't know how much mTOR you need to suppress and whether or not rapamycin is the best way to do it. Maybe it's just an overkill. Maybe rapamycin is overkill when it comes to suppressing mTOR. Maybe all you need is to do just some time-restricted eating and some maybe periodic fasting to already get those effects because fasting is also the most powerful way, like a natural way, non-pharmaceutical non way of suppressing mTOR. And um, if I were to choose, then I would probably take uh, fasting <laughs> as a way to suppress mTOR and uh, get the other longevity benefits that uh, come from that. So yeah, I'm personally not mm, convinced <laughs> yet to take any rapamycin Maybe, yeah, like in, a, I don't know, 10 or 20 years when there's more human studies, actually, maybe then I'll change my mind. But right now, when I'm 28 years old, I'm, yeah, planning on not taking rapamycin at all uh, for the, yeah, like next few decades for sure. And in the meanwhile, I'll just uh, stick to more natural ways of suppressing mTOR and, uh, you know, managing it. I'm not trying to suppress mTOR chronically, just periodically with some daily time restricted eating uh, not eating six times a day, etc. Not eating excessive amounts of protein and animal protein. Being mindful of the overall calorie intake and then incorporating some maybe periodic extended fasting into the mix as well. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.